thank you very much for inviting me. Um, cool. This is the, the book, it's going around, it came out um, a week ago, but the launch was last night at the Design Museum. I'm going to use three minutes of my 10 to introduce the project quickly with this video. The book is about what people touch around the world in 24 hours. So I went traveling and I photographed every single object from the moment that you wake up to the moment that you go to bed. And I'm making a documentary of it because I recorded everything. So the trailer works as an intro to the project and also to the film. When you just look at the artifacts of somebody's life, it is very much what an archaeologist does, right? I mean, they dig up stuff, and just from a shard of pottery, they could sometimes tell a lot about the civilization that lived. In lieu of having these things as artifacts, maybe, you know, future generations will find this, this kind of thing very interesting, I think. And you could easily relate to other people through objects. Being able to understand that at an individual level, I think is a brilliant exercise. Sometimes I think you learn how, how deep is reality for the other one, how complex is like everyday living. As you get closer, everything gets more complicated. So from the cerca, nadie es normal. It, it lets you reflect on your, on your own life. So I guess it's quite, kind of healthy to look at yourself as some other point of view or the outsider. And then you realise you have all these things that make your day better, your little ritual in the morning. We're talking about the part of life that is not the one that we talk about. To be able to bring those things out rather than the usual stuff that people use to define themselves brings something else that makes people really curious. But it's the fact that it's all at once. It gives you a perspective that you'd never normally get. You'd never, you never see life that way. If one does do I think what you've done, get people to collect the objects together of their, one day in their life, anything that documents a specific moment of an individual has, has, has an incredible value. My first reaction is that visceral one, my God, this is beautiful, which encourages you to go in and have a look. And then when you go in and have a look and start to analyse what's going on here, then the second word that comes to mind is, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Thank you. So that kind of like introduces the idea. And where it comes from is like, for me, our current interaction with objects was something that I felt the urge to document. As a product designer, I worked in the industry for 15 years. And as an ethnographer, I've also always been researching the, pro the products that we have to design. And I found that things were getting out of sync that normally the things uh, used to be really easy. Clients used to say, oh, can you design a vacuum cleaner? Can you research that? And now the questions that we get asked are like the future of entertainment, the future of search. Nobody is kind of like really sure to put all the emphasis in one product anymore. People want to look wider. And we still use loads of them. So I was thinking like, what is going to happen? And many of the things that we know about past civilizations are from the objects that we found and we try to make sense of how they live and what they did so i was thinking like in a kind of a hypothesis if somebody was to make sense of our lives by what we touch today what are they going to think or deduct about ourselves so the question was like was our will ours do the same so i wanted to make a book about people but i was interested in, in what would the physical footprint of a day in their lives say about them so the book is those 62 spreads that you saw. 
And the rule number one, I contacted everyone and I said, keep a record of everything you touch in a day of your life from the moment that you wake up to the moment that you go to bed. And then rule number two was honesty is at the heart of participating. So it means everything touch, and it does. And then you find yourself in situations where people bring you the objects and they're like, oh, can I put that? Can I, can I, you know, can I put a spliff? Can I say that I drank two, I have two wines? And then there's funny things like, this guy brought me these uh, extra large condoms and he, I took one out of the box to put next to a thing and he said, oh, no, no, seven. And I had this kind of whole conversation with him where I didn't believe that he used seven and then we had to agree that three was a number that he was acceptable. <laughs> so that, that's what you have. But that's when you know, when you talk about yourself through the objects that you touch, that lo those objects are saying a lot about you. And the rule number three is like everybody had the same canvas. It was four meters by 270. So the more you have or the less you had, your photo would look you know, more compacted or not. And all the photos, I took them from the top. With the, I traveled with a rig around and I hooked my Canon to the top and I took them controlling the camera with the Canon app from my phone. So it was really easy to, be, to see the picture and be able to do that. So just to, I actually have six minutes left. That's good, I'm speaking so fast. So, no, four minutes. So, uh, just to show you some of the spreads and pick up on a little things of, you know, also thinking from the uh, point of view of collecting, but this photo I love. This one is of my mother. She's 62. She lives in Buenos Aires. And where I'm from, and what I like about this photo is that it shows many of the things that we don't have anymore today. So, my mom wakes up with uh, an alarm clock. That's really rare to find in people's photos. She has two radios the first one in, the, in her bedroom and the second one in the kitchen. So when she goes to make her breakfast, she switches the other radio. She then has a landline telephone there in the middle. She also has money, which I don't see in many people's photos because they just give me the card and they make a transaction with card. But so she has the landline, she has CDs. My mom and only one more person in the book has physical music. So music is something that we don't touch anymore. So if I was to make sense of them by what they touch, I would never be able to find out about their music taste, which is such a way of expressing our identity. She also has something really unique. Well, it's not unique, but it's a remote control, and she loves it so much that it's covered on cling film, so that the letters that don't get deleted, you know, like, and wrapped off. So my mom is only one of the few people that have a remote control when they go to bed, because most of people either take their laptops or they are the iPads and watch telly that way, if they're gonna do it in bed. So I think that it's kind of like this photo is showing us a little bit of, you know, like what is current now, but a little bit of the past and the things that we have lost. He is Mr. Liu, he's 71, and he's a puppet, shadow puppet master from Shanghai. And all the things that he talked about collection when he talked about these photos, and like my, mom, my mom's that it was just today in her life, but he talked about all the things, he made all those puppets himself, and they are made with donkey height and he made them all, and he made the instruments that are on the photos. And this photo for me talks about uh, old China. It has a lot of things like the little, you know, uh, the books from the revolution, and it has things that are kind of from the old days. If you compare it with Nini, who is a screen printing artist that runs a really cool studio called Idle Beats in Shanghai, you can see a bit new China versus old China. Nini wears Uniqlo jeans, Californian vans, a Talton uh, jumper from Cumbria. And it's kind of like a complete different, like a new China versus the old China. And it's a lot, there's a lot that you can learn about someone by looking at their stuff. Um, sorry if I didn't say it, I should have, but it works chronologically. I think it's obvious, but I, I didn't mention it, how the day is structured. Um, then, for example, this is a, a busker violinist from Seattle, Davis. And he talked about being able to live only with those objects. And he said that that's what he touches in any day of his life. And he moved around so much. He said that when he started to move, he needed a truck, and now he can fit everything in a mini. And he was really proud of having let a lot of things go. And he said that he doesn't want to be defined by objects, and he, doesn't, he wants his objects to reflect the present, not the past of who he used to be or the things that will remember him on that not the future, because he doesn't want to hang out of objects that are a projection of yourself in case one day you will learn to play guitar or in case one day you will, you know, we have like a sewing machine in case one day we will do something. And he thought that that wasn't healthy, that he just had to have his things. I asked him what happened if he lost his violin, violin there, and he said the violin, the violin doesn't owe me, I am the violinist, not the object. 
So that was quite interesting. And then there are kind of like his special effects artist from Buenos Aires. Uh, that's a fat suit. And I kind of like things like we don't use every day, but that's a um, thing to pump blood through this torso eaten by a jaguar. And the kind of, anyway, but I'll move quickly because I think I've run out of time. And the book works this way. So you see the photo, but you don't know anything about, anybody about, anything about them, so you can even play to see oh, who is this person behind. And then when you turn the page, you, get, you see a person of, uh, photo of the person, you have their name, where are they from. And for the curious minds, you have an inventory of every single thing they touch with all the brands and all the names of the things. So it's kind of interesting from that point of view. Apple is the brand that I've seen the most, followed by the second brand that I found on the book that people have the most is Colgate, which I thought it was quite interesting. <laughs> and then, you know, like Apple, Col Colgate, Ikea. That's how it works. I think I ran out of time, so I'll leave you guys. That's kind of Claire from California. She has records, that's the second one I mentioned, but it kind of like in a more cool LP way. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, fine. So Anna from Tokyo, a two-year-old girl, and she was the one that touched the most in my book. <laughs> uh, she, had, she touched 220 things. And David is a cowboy from Tucson. Eitaro is a male geisha from Tokyo. So he inherited his mom's business. So he, one day he was left with a geisha house and he had to take over. He's the only male geisha in Tokyo. So you can see his transformation during the day, where during the day he's you know, reading a magazine and in the bus playing PlayStation to then getting into all his mom's old wig and makeup and going to run the business. The book has funny things like couples and you can spot them afterwards. Like this is a musician from Madrid called Pedro. So you can see there he's cooking a paella in the middle of the day. And then if you look thoroughly, you spot Claudia, who is his girlfriend, and she does the washing up and eats the paella. But <laughs> you kind of like then find all the things. So I, I just flick it through while I say goodbye and thank you. So that's, yeah, cool, thanks. <laughs>